Hey, 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 Good afternoon everyone, welcome to our pre-match press conference to preview our game against Chelsea. We'll start off with Ben. Hi Sean, um, can I ask you about Amadou Anana first of all, obviously was missing from the weekend, what's his, the update with him, is he available and back? Yeah he's back training, he's been training today, um, Jimmy Garner got a knock today, we're happy it's just a knock, um, Dom didn't train today but we're, we're pretty positive with uh, settling him down over the next couple of days, so we're just having to um, watch the players and make sure they're right going forwards. You mentioned Dominic didn't train. What was what was the issue? Yeah, he's just got a minor sort of niggly hamstring, which we've just been ultra careful with. Um, but he thinks he's on top of it, and the the medical team are as well. So mostly we've just got knocks at the minute. So nothing at this stage that we think is going to affect uh, Monday against Chelsea. It's the first time we've spoken to you, obviously, since the latest points deduction. What's your reaction to that? Um, I think similar to the last. You know, is. Um, unexpected in the sense that we thought it had been dealt with it obviously wasn't or it hasn't been and, and obviously the the time uh, the window to possibly appeal so the club will be looking into that um but yeah that I mean the, the last response was what's done is done the league table changes um we know or we're, we're very very confident we've been told it won't change again as regards anything this season um so therefore our focus is on the next round of games you know coming up after after the news and spoke to the players about it reminded the staff about it, reminded the truth at the moment, which is to stay focused on the job in hand. The supporters in particular have expressed their frustration at the inconsistency of the different penalties that have been imposed. Is that something that you share? I think it's difficult just because, you know, the, the confusion. I don't think it's just um, Evertonians. I, I, I think I mentioned the last time, I travel a lot, as you can imagine, a number of football fans generally who come up to me and say, what's that all about? And they're confused by it. We're a bit confused by it. That, I think that's... Fair to say. Um, whether we are or we not, there's still a job in hand. You know, the focus has to go back to the current situation, the current reality. So lots of people are scratching the head about the whys and wherefores, including ourselves at times. But it has to be parked again. You know, we've been through it once. We've got to go through it again. And we are going to do. Uh, and the game's come thick and fast after, after this week's training. Another off-field issue that you can't control, of course, is the protracted takeover. Um, I just wonder, I know, as I say, it's going on away from your day to day but the fact it's dragging on so long I mean how difficult is that situation to manage as a manager no, look I, I can only imagine um, certainly not in that world so I can't I can't say the, the, the facts of it but I can only imagine buying a football club is not an easy business you know and there must be so many different things to go through and so many checks that, are, that have to be done so I don't imagine for one second it's a simple process um, it's taking more time that's the way it goes um, I certainly am not involved at that level of what we do here um, so yeah the, the rest is just a wait and see situation What about Chelsea then? Um, what have you made of them this season? Obviously going down there on Monday night means that everyone else in the relegation fight will have played before you as well, adding perhaps a slightly different dynamic this week. Yeah, well, as I said, that that's irrelevant to us. I made it clear to me we can't control other people's landscapes and what the league table looks like through others. Um, Chelsea, going back to Chelsea... Uh, Maurizio is someone I've, I've always had respect for. I uh, always liked the work that he puts in. Obviously, a, a topsy-turvy style season by their standards. A lot of changes there, a lot of change in culture, I'm sure, from the way he works. Um, you know, we do it as being well at this place in the sense we delivered a good performance, uh, but that doesn't guarantee the next one. You know, I always make that clear to the players. They're a good outfit. They spent a lot of money over the last few years, which everyone knows, and they have some quality uh, without doubt. So we've got to make sure that we deliver. And that's the standard process of what I go through with the players. Um, don't rely on anyone else other than ourselves. Talking about Chelsea's far from consistent season, how important will be creating that front foot feel that you spoke about after the Burnley game? How important will that be? I think it's important anyway. Um, I think the front foot feel if you, is a, an old adage, but it's a fair one, you know. I think it's built on the fact that the last time we got a knock, everyone pulled together. And I think that's important to remind yourself, you know, and remind myself at times and the players. You know, the, the fans were terrific in what they... A new reality, if you like. There's another one now. I think it did 
sort of round the wagons for us and everyone went, hang on a minute, you know, the badge is more important than anything and I still feel the same. You know, the, the, the myself, the players, the staff, all pulling together, the fans as well, to make sure we look after ourselves and look after the club. Um, the restart is Chelsea, you know, and, and like you said, a reaction to the news is important, a positive reaction. Going back to your words, front foot thinking, front foot mentality, as we call it, that's an important factor. That's certainly the challenge in front of us. We certainly did that last time. We changed the recent story after a, a tough run of uh, results with a win and an important win, especially looking at the news that came next. Um, we've got to build on that. But certainly the the one thing I know, I think the time for fault and blame is is gone. You know, it's the way society works and everyone wants fault and blame for everything, you know, but I think we've got to park it. I think as a club, I think... Certainly myself, the, the, the staff and the players, I've certainly spoke to them about it. No recrimination of the past. It, what's done is done. Um, and I think the fans as well. I think we've just got to all stay in line, stay connected and take on the next challenge. And we've had a few knocks. You know, This city's had a few knocks in my lifetime, but the club's had a few knocks recently. Let's all pull together and get it done. You know, the, the rise of the Toffees is important for us. You know, when I was growing up, that was the fans' name. Changed slightly now and uses the name Evertonians. But when I was growing up, it was the Toffees as well. We've got to play our part, make no mistake. Never made an excuse since I've been here, never blamed anyone. But it is very helpful when our fans travel as they do in numbers and get behind us. I think that's a big part of what we can continue to work towards. And back on the pitch, it was a, a brilliant showing off the ball with the, the work put in. I suppose that needs to continue towards Chelsea. Yeah, we, we felt it was a different way of operating. You know, we, we had to find a way to win and that will be the, the next seven games, finding a way to win. Um, we'd made a lot of ground in the way we were playing the way we were trying to win games but we couldn't find that win we had to change it the players delivered a very um, fair minded performance all noses point in the right direction to change the style of play to win a game that might be needed the next one and the one after we'll see but the players are motivated without a doubt we spoke about the the frustration when seeing the, the expected goals and the stats and then that wasn't necessarily reflected in the in the results. Now the points are coming through and with the clarity you've got, is it a, a sense of relief now? I don't think it's a relief. You, you know, you work over a season to get some paybacks at time. You know, you can't, lady luck, you can't guarantee it, but you know, favour it. You know, I think it was Gary Player. If you work hard enough, you know, the lucky you become. And I think the team are working. Um, over time, the, the, the details in football are forever important. Um, we got the details right enough against um, against Burnley. You know, don't always have to get everything right, but you have to get the, the important factors right. And I thought we did. Kept them to minimal chances and found a chance, albeit from a pressing position. Why not? I spoke before that game about ugly goals. They, they're, as vi they're as important and vital as any goal. Um, and that was an ugly good goal in our sense and uh, took us over the line to win a game. And on that goal, back-to-back -back goals for, for Dom. I know he's obviously taken that knock this week, but it must be a big... Huge confidence boost from him. Have you, have you seen a change in him and, and the team as well? Yeah, I don't think it's a necessary change in him, but internally I'm sure it is because goal, uh, goal scorers want to score goals. Peto's got a couple recently as well, so that's a good sign when you see centre forwards are getting goals. Um, certainly good for him and good for us. Thanks, Alan. We'll go to Ian and Radio Moses. Sure. Hey. Um, Adrissa, is he available this week? Yeah, his um, child and his family are all well, so he's been training this week, so he should become available again. And with the problem that you had with Amadou last week and Idris, it was a start for Andre Gomez. And I just wonder what you've made of him in recent weeks. He's been getting a bit of game time, a few minutes under his belt. Yeah, it's been hard for him with all the, 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 the ups and downs of injury. Um, I made it clear when he came back to in the summer that I felt he could be an important part of us. And he's been so unlucky. Um, he delivered a very good physical performance, someone hadn't played in so long. Um, we know he's got quality and he certainly put himself right back in the frame for, for what we need going forwards. And he does give you something a little bit different, doesn't he? You can see a pass and that could be so crucial. Yeah, he's a, he's a very good technical player. Um, and he's no how as well. He's a knowledgeable player and I think that's helpful um, in our group at the moment. And, uh, you know, there's a calmness about his play. Uh, and hopefully, as long as he stays fit, he's certainly been fit this week and working hard. And I think he enjoyed it as well, locking in the full game. You know, it's been hard for him. And I think he enjoyed the challenge of it. And you've got some, some really big home games coming up, likes of Nottingham Forest and Brentford. But as you showed last season at Chelsea, because I think it was a similar situation when you went to Chelsea and came away with a point, you know, you've got to believe that you can get points anywhere. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, my mind says you can win every game. It's not that easy, but you can in theory. No one actually, there's no rule that you can't. It's just a tough business to try and win every game. But the mind says to try and win every game, that's for sure. Um, I believe in the side. I believe that we've been playing well. I believe over a season it pays you back, the consistency of the work. That's what we're going to do, continue the work, continue the daily work and put it into practice when the, when the whistle blows for the, for the, the real thing. Hi, 
Yeah, Sean. See how hey. Dan Juma's getting on, if that's all right. Yeah, he's uh, hopefully, providing he's come through today, which I'm, I'm pretty sure he has, he's got a, a bounce game tomorrow. So we're going to use that and get him some minutes and then should be at least in, in the thoughts for going into Monday's squad. Is there anything on Delhi? Do you think you might see him this season at all? Uh, no, like I say, at the moment, he's just getting on with life and, and recovering. Um, first half of the season, after like Corey was a talismanic present for you. Um, since his hamstring injuries, how have you rated them? He hasn't scored since the win over Chelsea. You've got some past, haven't you? Yeah, he's certainly putting a shift in. You know, the... The, the, the group of lads, um, you know, by their faith, have just come out of Ramadan. That will help, of course, with the fluid and the food and the prep and all the rest of it. So I think that's a big part of his game, his physicality, his energy and his belief in that side of the game. Um, but he's he's been a, a fantastic player ever since I put him back in the side when I got here. So absolute belief in him as much as there is in it, all others. Just ask you about planning for the summer, because obviously the accounts were released last week and there's significant losses again. and. No, last summer you had to sell Alex Iwobi in the past for Charles and being sold and Anthony Gordon. Is that something maybe that you're braced for at the minute or you're not looking at No, at the moment, the, 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 I could, well, as you can imagine, the clarity is there for us now, which is the job in hand. You know, the, the next steps of the club, the bigger picture, I can't control everything. Um, that's a different situation. But for now, we know where we're at. We know the truth at the moment. So that's my focus and that's the players, the staff and hopefully the fans' focus. The bigger picture stuff will be taken care of in due course. Well, any further questions in the open section before we move on to the, the written section?